Hello guys and welcome to the new episode of my compound series. This episode will cover the compound named Locked by Docks. I apologize in advance for the red background but I had to record this video in training mode. Let's start talking about this cart. Like any other cart it offers little or no cover and your legs are always showing. Next to the cart we find these planks. All the planks in this compound have the same penetration values and they can offer great cover. There's no rate to see someone hiding behind these planks trying to attack the compound. Next to the planks we can find these boxes that are a terrible cover. And some planks that share the same values as the other ones. They are a great cover for when you get pinched in a frontal fight if you are careful for the corners. Right behind the planks we can find this blue wooden building. Inside the building we can notice that the only cover is the engine and we can't move too much. It's not rare to find a person crouching in this corner using the engine as a cover. The problem is that if you use a long weapon the enemy can see it from behind and shoot you through the wall. You can also go on the top of the roof exposing yourself a lot but also gaining a view on the inside of the building. Outside the blue building we can find these planks that you can climb to the very top. Why would you do that? I don't know. Next to the red building there is a dog cage. Like any other dog cage is not bulletproof and it will provide only visual cover. Just like these boats. You can shoot through them with no problems. As for the planks on the right, you can only shoot through this white gap if no one is shooting at you already. You can climb up and use the roof as a cover. When you are on top of the planks, you should always be careful for that metal door. Although it's very difficult to shoot through it, if you are distracted fighting someone else, the boss layer defenders can have a pretty nasty angle on you. You should never enter this building without at least choke bombing it. People love to sit in this corner and get free kills. This slide is a bit particular. The majority of the people use this slide to get on the other side, exposing themselves a lot. You should instead go on the right and get at least a visual cover. When you approach the compound from this side, you should always check this bush. People love to dip their butts here in the water until someone walks in front of them. If we proceed closer to the boss layer, we can find this boat. This boat got me killed more than once because I got stuck on these planks. But if you are smarter than me, you can use it to get a great angle on the forest line. Every boat in this compound is not bulletproof and you should never hide behind them. On the opposite side, we can find this great angle on the wooden bridge. Perfect to get the advantage shot on someone rushing the compound. These boats are a scam, because sometimes they stop the bullets and after the second they don't anymore. If you want to approach the compound from the side, never walk on top of the bridge. Walk on the side and limit your enemy's visibility until you reach the mudslide. The mudslide is a fairly dangerous place that offers no cover but it's still a better choice than running on the top of the dock. If you walk on top of the dock, you only have one cover. These boxes are scattered around the compound and are almost 100% bulletproof. If you are stuck behind the box, you can always drop down and reach for the basement. But the biggest danger lies in the windows of the boss layer. Swapping from ADS and deep fire will give you better visuals on the inside, allowing you to quick scope anyone standing there. Especially this window can be deadly and you should never stand in front of it. If you want to check someone is behind there, just walk back and use the bushes to limit the visibility on you. 
Walking in front of this door is almost a certain death sentence. The white gaps in the door will surely give the boss layer defenders an angle on you. Left of the door, we can observe a very complicated spot. From here, you can see inside the lair. And from here, you can see even better, but keep in mind you and the person inside have zero cover. But we're not done with the cheesy spots here. If you look on the left, there is an amazing gap that can be used both from upstairs and downstairs. Walking here, the hole should be your second problem, because this window will surely get you killed. This door is my favorite troll door. It's one of the main entrances to the lair, but what I like to do is tell my mates to make some noise to beat the poor boss lair defenders outside and jump on them. This spot is kinda particular. The planks are a great cover, but the boats are just there as a decoration. These other planks are a common spot for the compound pushers. Usually throwing a nadir will resort in a double kill. The Harry Potter's tree here is a very common place to engage in fights. But instead of standing on top of the hill, stay on one side of the hill. You will capture the attention less and you will have cover on the right side. In front of the tree we can find these two covers. But the only real cover is the metal plank behind the wooden cart. If you need to heal, jump behind it and go back into the fight. Left to discover, we can find a very open dock that will allow you to get a good angle on the compound attackers. The clue shed is just a building made out of paper. Do not hide inside it for any reason. If you approach from this side, make sure no Vombox is hiding in the dog's cage, and if it's not, make sure to check this nasty angle on the boss layer window. When you approach the layer from this side, you must check all of these windows. As you can see, it's very easy to see inside. Also, the generator room is quite easy to wall bang. If you set the enemy inside on fire, it's going to be very easy to finish him. Worse than the window, there is only this gap in the wall that gives clear vision inside the generator room. Climbing the ladder, you can see how easy it will be for the people inside to take you down immediately. If you survive and climb on the roof, this is one spot that you need to know. It will give you visibility inside the boss lair and pretty cheesy kills if you don't fall down like a pepeno. You can also throw consumables inside the wall gap. Another very important spot is this little window. You need to use the same tactic of quick scoping to maintain visibility on the target. Before we get inside the boss lair, we need to master the underground area. And the first spot you need to learn is this trapdoor. Try to pick it at your own risk. Moving forward, we can find a long corridor that offers no cover at all. The only thing you can do is move on the side and pray the enemy doesn't try to wallbang you. If you want to enter the basement, make sure no trap is set here and then no one is watching this gap. The staircase is a great spot to counter the attackers if you are sure no one is above you. These boxes share the same property of the ones outside. Exception made for this one. The magic towel will nullify completely these textures hit boxes. The small basement room is very wall bangable, but it can be used to get a great angle on the door if someone has to come in in a rush. 
The door corner offered zero valid covers, but you can use this window to get an angle on the forest. I highly recommend staying on the right side of it to prevent getting spotted too easily from the outside. The only problem is that someone might be watching you from above. From this side there are two ways to get inside the lair. One is the metal door and the other one is this wooden door. Entering from this side is very easy if you shoot the wooden bar. On one scene you can see what kind of angle the window offers. A good and safe way to cover the window is by standing behind this metal cabinet and peek only when you hear some noise. These are the wooden windows we talked about before. As you can see, it's very easy to see the outside without exposing yourself too much. These spots work best if you're using a sniper rifle, but also a shotgun will do the trick if someone walks too close. The second window offers a bit less visibility, but it's still pretty good if someone walks in front of it. And the last window is the most dangerous one. From here you can get a very good angle on the outside, especially if you back up to the steps behind you. Don't forget about the spot to show you before though. Inside the boss layer you can find this box that is 100% not bulletproof and you should not hide behind it. Moving to the middle of the layer we can observe the little gap that allows to see the underground level. My tip for this spot is not to pick it from up close, because the only thing showing from downstairs will be your head. Moving on the left, we can find this barrel right next to a lantern that you should always turn off. These windows and doors are a great spot to stop the attackers approaching from the dock. If you trap this door, you can surely get one or more kills. Behind the barrel is this little room. From here you can use the barricaded windows in the same way of the others. As long as you don't get too close to the wall, you should be fine. You can also throw consumables from this little gap. And the enemies can throw them at you. This door is usually trapped and you should keep your distance when you are holding it. Don't forget also that these boats offer zero cover and you should not stop behind them. Before getting in the generator room take a look at the gaps in the windows. If you have good reflexes this spot will give you a lot of advantage. You can also throw consumables if you think someone is crashing behind the door. The generator room is a very dangerous place especially if you forget about this hole. From the inside you can pick the gaps with not a lot of effort and you can hide behind the generator by simply crouching. Next to the generator is the trapdoor. If you hold this spot don't get too close because the only thing showing from below will be your head. Behind the generator is the metal door. This metal door is a bit complex to pick, but if you time it well, you can kill the people on the planks without getting spotted. The first floor is where all the real cheesy spots are. This one, for example, is the best one to get an angle on the people walking on the dock. And right next to it, there is this very dangerous window. I highly recommend not to cross this line when picking the window, because it will make things way easier for the people outside. Right of the window there is my favorite sniper spot. From here you can see both Daryl livestock and Alice farm while keeping a very low profile. There is also a very nasty gap in the wall that will allow you to devastate people outside trying to wall bang the boss layer. You cannot throw grenades from this gap but you can throw them from the top which is even better. You can drop down from this hole on the enemies pushing the main door. You may have not noticed this gap but it's very deadly when you have a sniper in your hands. Mastering this spot can give you some early kills on the people pushing the compound. If you try to see in the gaps frontally don't stand still for too long. And I bet you never thought about using this window to snipe the people in the forest. 
Right now the sun is blinding, but in a different time of the day, this is a great spot. And the king of cheesy spots is won by these planks. I can't recall how many times I died to someone sitting up here. This spot is an evergreen and everyone should know about it. And we reach again the end of the video guys and as always I hope you learned some new things. I want to say a big thank you for the amazing support you guys are dropping on YouTube and on the stream. You guys are the best. I will see you guys every day on Twitch at the link in the description. Bye and don't tag people in memes that are not funny like it's so annoying dude.